I am going to describe the palpable and visible features of the forelimb. We have to have in mind that the forelimb is not attached um, to the rest of the body um, via a joint like the pelvic limb is. So the first thing we have to talk about are these extrinsic muscles that attach the forelimb to the rest of the body. So these extrinsic muscles are going to be, first of all, the latissimus dorsi muscle, which is going to be caudal to the scapula, which is here. We're also going to have the trapezius muscles with its two parts. We're going to have the cervical trapezius and the thoracic trapezius muscle. The rhomboidus muscle is going to be in between these two trapezius muscles. And we're also going to have the brachycephalic and omotransversus muscles coming um, cranially. Um, the first region of the thoracic limb that we have to talk about is the scapular region. This is where the scapula is. The scapula is going to articulate with the humerus in the elbow region, which we can feel just here. The humerus is going to be orientated distal cordially, this direction, and is going to articulate with the radius and ulna in the elbow region. The most prominent feature in the elbow region is the olecranon process of the ulna. Okay, so this is the brachial region, and this is going to be the antebrachial region, where we have the radius and the ulna. This is going to be the carpal region, then the metacarpal region, and the phalangeal region. Okay, so the first bone that we have to talk about in the forelimb is the scapula. The scapula is going to be very easy to palpate in this region and we're going to have the cranial border of the scapula, the caudal border of the scapula and in between these two we will be able to palpate the um, spine of the scapula which is going to be right in the middle there. Distally to the spine of the scapula, if we follow the spine down we will feel the acromion the scapula. Cranially to the spine of the scapula we're going to have the, the supraspinatus muscle and distally we're going to have the infraspinatus muscle. Scapula articulates with the humerus at the shoulder joint. The most prominent feature that we can feel in this area is the greater trochanter of the humerus which is just here. Okay. And um, Cordially to this region, we are going to have the triceps muscle. The most superficial features of the triceps muscles is the lateral head and the long head. Okay. And we can also feel the tendon of the triceps inserting onto the olecranon just there. Cranially, we have the biceps muscle which is going to be sort of cranially and medial to the humerus, just in this region here. Okay. So in the elbow joint, the most prominent feature of the elbow joint is the olecranon process, as we have already spoken about. We can feel the tricipital tendon going into the olecranon process. We can also feel the epicondyles of the humerus, lateral and medially. And distally, we can also feel the head of the radius just there. It is important to know that in the antebrachial region, we are going to have the um, extensor and flexor muscles. So the first one is going to be the carporadial extensor muscle, common digital extensor muscle, lateral digital extensor muscle, and carporidealis extensor muscle. The most um, superficial and prominent um, flexor muscle is going to be medially, and it's going to be the um, superficial digital flexor muscle. Just coming across there. The next joint is the carpal joint, which is formed by two rows of carpal bones. The most prominent carpal bone is the accessory carpal bone, which is just there. This carpal bone has, um, we can see the carpal pad, just there. 
And then in this region, we can feel the metacarpal bones and the most um, superficial feature in this region uh, is going to be the extensor tendon, the extensor tendons coming down to the digitals. On the medial side, we have the first rudimentary digit. And then going from medially laterally, we have the second, third, fourth, and fifth digits. You can also see the digital pads. And we can also palpate the different, um, the different joints. So we're going to have the metacarpophalangeal joint, and then we're going to have the proximal interphalangeal and distal interphalangeal joints. Okay, the important structures to have in mind in the interbrachial region are going to be the cephalic vein, which is going to run cranially, just there. We are also going to have, um, next to the cephalic vein, we are also going to have the lateral cutaneous nerve. The cephalic vein is a common site for blood samples and injections of drugs as well. So it is important to note that the lateral cutaneous nerve is actually sitting next to it in case we don't put our needle in the cephalic vein and we do it in the lateral cutaneous nerve because it would be very painful. The lateral cutaneous nerve is actually a branch of the radial nerve, which is coming down here. Okay. And in the case of humeral fracture, the radial nerve can be severed. The radial nerve is going to innervate the extensor muscles of the forelimb, so it is very important to note that if the radial nerve is severed, it won't be able to innervate these muscles. The ulnar nerve is going to be medially on the medial side of the forelimb, just running across there.